Hello. Hi, we're back. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. I am hungry still. And so I have Steel. pot roast. Oh, it's the, it looks really fun. You know good. what? It's so, so I, it's the kind you get the pot roast and then you put in a packet of ranch, a packet of like, like uh, ranch seasoning, mm -hmm. a packet of au jus, and then pepperoncinis, a stick of butter. That's it. And I the put meat, the potatoes, uh -huh, and the carrots. I, mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, and is the meat and the pot are the carrots and the potatoes come in the package of meat with it too, no. or you buy that separate? Buy that because I've seen where they have. I want to like sell it. Yeah, all no, together. I want to season my own stuff. No, I bought everything. In fact, I bought because you know my family eats like horses. I spent forty dollars meat yesterday for dinner. You cooked it all because mm -hmm, I bought two twenty dollar roasts. Mm -hmm. Did you have a lot left? Uh, we had a ro We had one roast was gone and the other roast was left. So that's what we're eating tonight. Leftovers. Yeah. Anyways, so we just finished up part one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we like we said before, it's um, sexual assault awareness month in April. Mm -hmm. Which by the time we post this, is probably we're gonna, gonna be May, we're gonna but... try and post this. Today's the last day of April. Oh well, you know what? <laughs> we try. So yeah, you get the point. So just be a little bit like I'm being rude. I'm just gonna eat a little bit. So sorry. It's fine. Um, so Amanda, if you didn't watch part one, go watch it. Then you can watch part two. Um, which is I guess my story. And we felt like because it's such a sensitive topic, we didn't want to cram both of our stories into one and we didn't want to talk over each other. Which if you watched us before, that can happen. Um and not like, it's not like in a bad, rude way, but this right. was something that we wanted to make sure that we both had enough time to share what we wanted to share. Right. So, which, yeah, I don't know. Which I, I feel good and about we mine. we feel like, like you said in the, in your intro, um, you know, we're not sharing this to like get sympathy or. Empathy. Um, um, it's. We're not doing. Just our story. And if it can, if anybody can relate or um we also wanted to show uh, you know not just the perfect looking facades of all of us like you know we've been through some shit to get where we are today and we're not going to go into all of our shit no, that, today that would, we would need like a, a 12 i don't more need days. more than one bottle of yeah, wine yeah it's like the 12 days of mm -hmm. not christmas but Shit. The 12 yeah, days of trauma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 12 years. <laughs> um, oh, boy. But, so, and once again, we're, I, I want to reiterate that we're not doing this to score points or score viewers. In fact, I would really rather not be talking about this. And I know she feels the same way. Um, but yet, we both have discussed it before and kind of have felt compelled. I, I felt like it was something that sure, God sure. wanted me to do. Right. Um, and, and with April being sexual, mm -hmm. we thought it was awareness, a good and time. We had been talking about this more lately and stuff. Um, so yeah. Okay, so um, Rachel, go for it. Uh, where do I start? And Rachel's. I want to say this. Rachel's um, experience. One of her experiences um, happened at a much younger age. Um, twelve. I was twelve. And uh, through fourteen. When this was happening, I was friends with her well part of it yeah i guess mm -hmm. and um i ended up finding out about it at a cheerleading sleepover i told everybody mm -hmm. there forgot that night so <clears throat> i was you know 12 years old i had a best friend you know in elementary school and then you know my best friend obviously we went to junior high together so maybe this did start late grade school yeah because when i when we were in grade school it was k through six right mm -hmm. so it might have been sixth grade and then it was junior high it was seven through nine so amanda and i went to school together seven through nine i met her in quest my first day of seventh grade yeah. so this might have started in sixth grade and then continued on through junior high i think the grooming probably started before that mm -hmm. so my best friend her stepfather sexually abused her and myself and come to find out a bunch more people, but we'll get to that. Um, 
and really, yeah, I kind of just started with comments and touches and, you know, do you think I'm sexy? And I'm like, why is it, why is your dad asking me? Especially in sixth question. grade, if somebody asked, he would give us alcohol when we were 12, um, which, you know, at the time we were like, what? I mean, it was this, peach schnapps and orange juice, but this man truly, it was the classic grooming. grooming. Really like was. he was relatable. He tried to be fun. He was like, it was, I mean, textbook. Mm -hmm. And back then, I, I don't even think the word grooming in this, it related to I mean, this. As a 12 year old. Yeah. That wasn't even, I don't even think that was a word that was used. I had never heard of it until I was an adult. So it kind of um, started with my best friend, her own stepdad and her and she'd tell me about it. And then I, you know, he started making comments and touches and things. And he would always try to get one of us by ourselves, like try to take me home, you know? And I'm like, no, no, mm -hmm. can she, can your mom take me home? Or I'll walk or, you know, like we, we. And it wasn't like close to walk. I mean, you guys lived in the same, but it wasn't like yeah. right down the street. Yeah. Especially at, like yeah. night when yeah. I'm going home, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and my best friend and I didn't want to tell anyone like her mom or my parents because they moved here from California, what, in third grade or fourth grade? And like, and you, you know, guys knew. we immediately were best friends. And so I, we knew Julie, well, she and I knew that, um, you know, if our parents found out or whatnot, that her mom would take her and her sister back to California, which is exactly what happened um, when it all did come out. But I don't think her mom had much of a choice. No. I, I don't think she had the ability to stay here. Right. Um, and and I, her family mm -hmm. was all like they she were needed, only she in Kansas. She support. Yes. yes. They were only in Kansas because of his job, I believe. And this is, I want to say this because I've heard a lot of people because, so when she told us this story, it was literally at a cheerleading sleepover because her friend who was also a friend of mine. We were all cheerleaders. Um, and I remember, I don't know who it was, but somebody said, well, why did you keep going back over there? And so if you know, Rachel, she's very, very loyal and she's like a protector. Right. And that, I want to, I want to get this out there because I think I don't want anybody else to say that, but say, ask that same thing but you're a protector, right? And mm -hmm. you've always been like that. Mm -hmm. So you kept going back over because you- I was protecting her. Mm -hmm. Like literally, she would, I told like, she would take it so she so her friend didn't have to. Right, so me and my best friend, you know, we had an agreement that we will, you know, try our damnedest to never be left alone with him because that's, you know, we would just try to avoid like, so if her sister, you know, if her mom was working and her sister left the house to go play with a friend, she would immediately call me and be like, I'm here alone. Like, can't get over here or I'm coming over or whatever. Like we would try to, as 12, 13, 14 year olds, facilitate a way Do not to be alone do. with him. Mm -hmm. And at one point, like she, my best friend was not okay because of what was going on and was like, you know, emotionally and you always stuff, felt like her not protector. okay so i even mm -hmm. in one instance when i was alone with him and i i told him i said please just stop doing it to her like stop she you need to stop with her i said if you're so sick and you need somebody to fuck i said i'm strong enough i can take it you know like just leave her alone and you really believe like you really believed that yeah mm-hmm mm -hmm. Um, so I, I guess when somebody says, why did that, that pisses me off. And that's why I wanted somebody, why did you keep going back? That, that, those kind of comments piss me off. Mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to put that out there now before we get some. Right. I mean, it's not like I went over there underneath. to. No, God, no. No, you, for it. no, you never wanted this. Right. Uh, neither did, uh, our friend. Um, and so, yeah, like we said, this went on for a couple of years. Um, and then, you know, it was really wearing on my friend and I both and like, you probably we knew it wasn't right. And like, it would just kept kind of like getting progressively worse over time. 
And did he become more daring? More? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, like I said in the beginning, it was just like comments and little touches or kisses or whatever, and which was yeah. And then it, you know it progressed, and then it was you know stopping on a dark, sh taking me home by myself, and I'm like, where are you going? Where are you going? And it's like oh, no so streetlights, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm gonna die. And like even as a, even as an adult, that scares me. So I, I can't imagine as a child. honestly, I have rep. Rest a, a lot of the specifics of what happened in those mm -hmm. years but like I do remember that one time and he took me to was take supposed to be taking me home and pulled over on a side of a dark road and I beat the shit out of him so did you get out did he take you home or did you get out I can't remember no he ended up taking me home after I I I, I knew that you used kicked elbows him. and knees yeah. and kicked and whatever because I was not like going down without a fight, you know. When and see, I came down to it, and so he, you know, eventually stopped. Like I, I got, injured him enough or whatever to like stop that at that time. And I remember him hitting his steering wheel and saying, "Oh, I just need a divorce." His wife, so she, he could be I'm with a twelve-year-old, and I wouldn't be doing this if I could. And I'm like, mm, and he, just so he starts his car, and then literally just takes me home, and I literally jump out of my, I'm you know crying in the car, right? And I jump out of the car, and I'm like, I'm like, okay, pull my shit together, like, because my parents are inside, and I'm I, gonna they say, don't know yeah, anything. So my, if when I walked in, like, I, my so parents then I always knew when something was wrong. I get out of the car, and he's like, okay, bye, see you later. Like it's like you know normal so and so i pull myself together and walk in my house and just hey mom dad and, you know go straight to my room i just feel like as females uh, i don't even I don't, it, and it's not necessarily that we're taught to do this but i feel like we have to repress a lot of emotions and a lot of feelings at a lot of different times um mm -hmm. i don't know why but i feel like that um so how did it get, how did it come out? How did it come to so light? So we, we, me and my best friend were in cheerleading with Amanda and obviously the Our other friends, 12 girls that were at the sleepover or whatever, eight. not 10 of us, eight, eight total mm -hmm. of us. Mm -hmm. We had eight outfits, eight cheerleaders. Okay. So it was just our grade. At the mm -hmm. It was just our grade. So me and Julie and six other girls. Well, it's fine. I'll text it's her. not her. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um... So we, I don't know what led us to think well, that we know, needed to share about it. Like, like, it was we a slumber talking, party. Yeah. And like, aren't, none of us drank. It was nothing like that. We were in. We were in eighth grade. No. No, we were in mm -hmm. eighth. We were in eighth getting ready to go to ninth because we had cheerleading drops for ninth mm -hmm. grade. And we were at um, Heidi's. Was it? House. I thought it was Nicolette. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Okay. Um, I don't remember if I shared. Honestly, I don't. I remember the sleepover, and I remember we shared. I don't know if I told the story or she did. I, I think it. I don't remember that. I don't know. But we talked about it, and that was that. We went on with life. I think Me she, and my, she was upset that night when we were there. That's what she was upset. Like she was emotional, and that's mm -hmm. how it started getting brought out. Yeah. So we thought everything was normal, and we could trust our six other you know, really close girlfriends to, you know, keep the secret for us. And, um, I kept my mouth shut, which home. isn't anything to be proud about. Right. Honestly, I should have told a parent immediately. Um, I kept my mouth shut. I think that we knew, like, I think that, I think you guys probably we wanted, wanted to like deep, yeah. deep down. You wanted How do I go somebody. To my, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I, honestly, it was the worst timing of it all coming out though. I, I wish, I wish back then I would have been smart enough to have been the one to tell somebody. One of the but other, I wasn't. one of the other cheerleaders went home after the summer party and told her mom and her mom called the school. Well, that's our informed them. That person's mom, that, that, that cheerleader's mom, that cheerleader's dad was very high up in the school district and he was a mandated reporter. So her mom told her dad and they uh, had no legally, I mean, and they're good people. So they were, but legally they had to do that. Mm -hmm. Um, so.
so so we were trying out for cheerleading it yeah it was a few it, it took a while for mm -hmm. it to like come yes it was because we had the sleepover and then mm -hmm. i think it was like it was like weeks. a month um, yeah three to four weeks after maybe mm -hmm. longer and so we were all trying out our eighth grade year for freshmen like you know varsity cheerleading and it's after school you know from three to five during the week is like your practice and then on friday is tryouts right so friday at 3 p.m the school bell rings school's over all of us cheerleaders and we're trying out at like 3 30 yeah. right trying out at 3 30 it's three o'clock the cheerleaders are all in the commons area practicing dressed and ready school counselor comes out of her office and says my best friend's name can i talk to you and she's gone for a little bit and then she comes out crying and i'm like what's going on what's wrong and then the school counselor like rachel can i talk to you and i'm like oh shit yeah, why? Uh, okay, I'm like, I wait, wanna, I, I just, like, try it? Like, I, I just want to say, why? What horrible timing? Yeah, like, why can't you just let us try out and then talk yeah, to us after That would have been the smart move. Once again, honestly, I think that administration back then did not think for one second about the best interest of the child. I really did, like... Like, because that, like, cheerleading was our, like, life Cheerleading was then, a big, you know? and it was and hard. Like, it wasn't easy to make it. It was, like, it was our, hard. Our outlet and our, you know, reason to be out of the house away from mm -hmm. him at events and games and whatever and just not yeah. the best time and honestly like how insensitive so you know she's like do you know his name her stepdad and I said yes and then I just immediately started crying and she just like you know we've heard this and this and blah 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 and is it true and I said yes and they of course had already called her mom and my parents and so then we proceeded to try out for cheerleading mm -hmm. still mm -hmm. And after cheerleading trials, you know, your parents are there and you see who makes and stuff. And my mom and her mom are just there both bawling. They and announced I'm just like, it. Everybody's in the gym. They announced it. I remember your mom. She, I remember. She'd like mascara. I remember that. And so her, Julie and I, I already said her name. That's not her real name. So it's fine. Um, and our, both of our moms went back to my house and like talked. I remember my mom being like, "What? Why is Rachel's mom upset?" And I'm like, "I don't know." And at the time, I did. I right. didn't know. Yeah, you all. I, we didn't know what was going on. Um, how did you? Who told you? Who told the school? Like, how did you find that out? She told me. Oh, our cheerleader friend. Okay. At Julie's going away party. So. Uh, oh. Because she, she was. Okay. So, you know, we're 14 years old or my best friend or whatever. Our parents just find out it's a mess. Her mom's like, I don't, I can't go home. I can't go home to him. Like, what, oh God, so what did she do? Her mom's, they stayed with a friend for a little bit. And, you know, my mom's like, stay here. Whatever mm -hmm. you need to do. And uh, literally, I think it was two weeks later, they were moving back to California. My best friend and her sister and her mom. And um, we had a little going away party at my house. And the cheerleader friend that told her mom was there and was like bawling, bawling like uncontrollably emotional about her leaving. And did not I'm like, what? Why are you like so? And she's like, it's my fault. I think. Honestly, though, she did the right. Mm -hmm. And even yeah. our friend did the right thing. Yeah. Um, no, that's. Yeah, our friend mm -hmm. said it's my fault. Yes. Or whatever. She, but, um, she did the right thing. Um. And honestly, that's not even a thing any kid, not only you, but even like our friend, like we, none of us should have had to worry about that. that. Never should have been a situation that we were ever in in any way. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So literally from that point on, uh, older men, like I, I was always like very like, uh, I never, I didn't trust any, I didn't trust a, a man. I still don't. Let's be honest. No. I mean, like, my husband, yes. Yes, in certain senses. But um, I had I, I had an issue even, like, talking to my dad after that. Because, like, knowing that he knew. And, like, like you said, you had to tell your story in front of your dad. Like, that would have, it's, like, not been okay to me. Because I, oh. Yeah. It's, um, it does change your dynamic with males. Um, I, I remember, like, after that after it all came out like kind of avoiding my dad because I just didn't want to like 
talk to him. I didn't want him to ask me questions. I didn't want. I think it's hard he, you know. because these people didn't look like bad people, right? They didn't, I didn't. In fact, I mean, some of them were my best friends for years. Um, so for me, even now, I'm like, okay, how do I actually know that like you're you, a good you, person? You don't like, trust anyone. No, right? because yeah. I, you can look and act right and still be terrible. So my dad did, um, I think it was the next day after cheerleading tryouts. My mom and I had just gotten home from somewhere or my mom and my bro brother and I had just gotten home and my dad is in the driveway and my dad is like, Chris, get in the car, let's go. And I was like, dad. Didn't you feel funny about your brother even knowing? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I don't think my brother really knew everything at mm -hmm. that point. Um, but, but I knew my dad, what my dad was getting ready to do. And, and her brother's older, was older than us. Four years so. older than mm -hmm. me. So my brother was in high school, right? And my dad. But this man who sexually abused me was a professional boxer and... Um, big, big man. Big guy, like, you know, And your muscular. dad is not. Yeah, my dad's just, you know... Average size. Yeah. I mean, he was strong. Not like whatever, small, but, but just like an average So I was person. worried that, you know, my dad was going to go over there and like... Get killed? Fight this guy. And the guy would fight back and, you know professional boxer your dad didn't have a gun did he no thank god that's probably beneficial yeah so my dad did go over there and I'm like dad no don't go it's okay so just you knew home. what you got home and he was getting ready to i leave. just knew by my dad's demeanor and he's literally like pissed gonna kill someone hitting his hand did your Chris brother get know in the car what was going to happen I, mean, got I don't think my brother was there to like do anything physically, but yes. like if anything. Would he hold your dad back? I don't, yeah. But in, and the, and my was, abuser was outside. This was like pre-cell phone people. So yeah. it's not like anybody had a cell phone that they could call 911 if shit went down. Yeah. So my dad did go over and he, the guy was outside sitting on the ground working on his motorcycle. And after the fact, like not right after I found all this out, but my dad has told me later, but. My dad, you know, asked him to stand up and everything. He's, and he's like, he, he was, was a like, coward. No, sir. Yes, he was. Mm -hmm. He was a coward. And my dad said, "You have one week to get the f out of my town, city. Uh, I will be back here in one week. If you aren't gone, you're dead." I just really feel like there's... And a, he was gone. I feel like there's a time and a place, like truly, that chemical castration should be legally considered. Yeah. I really so, do. And he's a repeat offender. This is the thing. So so that was eighth grade going into ninth grade. He did leave. He followed my dad's advice wisely. And actually, he went back to California. Mm -hmm. He did have family in California too, but not to where... Not, not in the same area right. as... Not with my your friend. best friend, yes. Um, so he did go back to California. And fast forward to my junior okay, so, year. So in high this school? this is in our this happened at the end of our eighth grade year. Okay, so eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. So four years later, I get a subpoena to show up in Santa Barbara, California court to testify against him, and the prosecutor, I guess, called my mom and I and said, you know, we'll pay for your whole trip, and. My friend Julie and her mom will be there also. And, you know, you guys can stay a couple extra days if you want. Like, it can be a reunion, but we would love you to testify against him. So we showed up, and there's, like, eight other girls there. And we were testifying in a situation with two girls. And one of the girls there was his own niece, blood relative, right? Because Julie was stepdaughter, whatever. His own oh. niece who claimed that... She was 21 at the time, and he claimed she claimed he, he raped her when she was eight. So his sibling, one of his siblings' children. Mm -hmm. um, she was eight. Mm, yeah. So it's obviously not a no. The, 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 once again, this once, was a one serial uh, a pedophile, and that's when I say chemical castration, because this is so sex. Uh, people who are in prison for sexual assault pedophile right they're the number one reoffender. why do we keep giving them the chance it is like something no like chemically yes wrong. and statistically they are 
the most likely to. It's like they cannot control themselves. So don't put that in their hands. Take that away from them. Um, and I know how, I have no idea why sentences are so. Statute of li for the for the disgusting. rape of his niece. You know it had been statute of limitations. Like they couldn't have done anything. They were, were only there to. He only got charged. And every with every state has different statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, some states with rape there is no statute of limitations. Mm -hmm. Um, I do not believe Kansas has a statute of limitations. Yes, they do. They do. Mm -hmm. Last, I don't. I don't For know. rape. Uh huh. I looked uh -huh. into that. Hmm. Um. <laughs> don't fuck with me anymore. I can um, pull this no, card. I, I had looked into. I have looked into that. Maybe. Past, maybe. But yeah. Maybe. Every not. state. Every state is different. Um. So you guys chose to not press charges in the state of Kansas. Oh, no. We did. But he fled to California, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, because so they weren't going to extradite a child. Like, mm -hmm. it's, it, I think it was out of me and my family's hands. Well, like, he yeah, was... Because the school, the school found out. Right. And the school is mandated reporter. Right. So they so had that, to report The state it. then, like, just took over. Okay. So that makes sense. when I went to California, he got sentenced for the max that he could get sentenced to, which was, I think, only three years. Which to okay. me, I'm like, you have like, no, there was eight or nine of us. Yeah. Like you have nine girls, young girls here saying the same stories. Like you're just going to let them go sit there for let a couple, go, three years and get out. on a little rant really fast. Okay. And then I'll shut up. I promise. Cause it's Rachel's time. But so our, um, legal system, uh, they punish, uh, nonviolent offenders, uh, drug users very harshly. Right. But then child rapists get a slap on the wrist, right? So honestly, it just shows what we prioritize in this country, which is not children, not children and not protecting children and not prosecuting and punishing those stupid motherfuckers who are out raping. It's, it's, it's mind blowing to me. And I don't care if you're left, right, middle i don't care you should feel the same way you should feel the same we should all be up in arms about pedophiles getting three years of prison like we should all care about oh and i this. don't think he didn't spend all three years no i'm sure good behavior oh you're off in two we should all care about this and i don't understand why it's not a bigger deal i really don't so when he did get out of jail, mm -hmm. so this would have been what my early years of college, mm -hmm. um, he was extradited back to Kansas oh, because okay. he had charges here. I never had to go to court in Kansas. You didn't? No. Why did, what? So did he, it, was he, did he serve time here? No. What? Then why did they bring him back here? I don't know. He was on, um parole here because he got out of prison there he was on parole here and i just know he had to be on the kbi you know sex offenders website is he still here <laughs> so his you know picture and address and everything is there and he lived in overland park and i'm just like whoa like he's right there so like for a year like randomly i'll check the website and like there's updated picture or an updated address and like i've always just and I got drunk with my brother, like, as an adult, just, just several years ago. And I'm like, I'm like, I just wonder, like, if he's with some other woman that has young girls. And, like, I I just want to, like, knock on the door. And, then like, if there's, just leave a sign if there's in young yard. girls in the house, be like, mm -hmm. get out! I would run! leave a sign in his yard. And I want to spit in his face, really, is what I want to do. Um, I... I don't think there's anything wrong with leaving a sign in his yard and letting his family and all of the neighbors know exactly who lives in that house. I don't think he lives there anymore. He's now not on KBI's website anymore right? within the last couple of years. So um, I don't know if if he moves out of the state, they can they have they take it down. So and this is like so this terrible terrible man, right? Um, he did something that alters her life. Our friends life all these women's life kids life for the rest of their life like although you are you're not damaged you're fine but you well, that still, was the beginning of yes it, but i'm saying me you, damaged, this, yes. you will always 
Like this will affect you forever, even if you don't want I it to. I was at dinner two weeks ago with my husband, sitting mm -hmm. there having a great conversation. These people get sat over here behind us and I look over and I was like, oh. and then my stomach drops, right? And mm -hmm. Billy's like, what? And like, I just got really kind, quiet and was like staring. And I was just like, he's like, what? And like, he looks over and I was, he was like, you think that's him? And oh. I was like, I don't, like, so there's like people who um, like look familiar and like, I just immediately get like, I have, what do I do? I ran into uh, uh, my rapist twice. Uh, one time he was working at the mall and the other time we were at like a house party and um, both times I immediately puked like I literally in the middle of the mall puked in the mall trash can I was with my ex-husband um, it was like a visceral reaction mm -hmm. that you uh, you uh, couldn't that. help it was just an immediate like uh, I mean I'm 37 years old and my stomach just still drops when I look mm -hmm. see somebody that looked um similar yeah um and even if, like, if he's tried to contact me, like, literally, I it takes me, like, a good two to three weeks to, like, not recover, but to... You get, you get messed up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but so that's... But no, so what I'm saying is that this piece of shit did something to her and numerous other girls. And um, he's moved on. His life is probably... He's probably still doing exact it. exact same. Yeah. Um, and they will somehow be affected by this forever. I don't I just I have no words so and I also want to say I, I definitely think um why don't you explain how you felt when you found out that you were having a daughter and, and you wanted to you wanted to have kids you wanted to be pregnant so first that was the first um instance of you know sexual assault or whatever or sexual harassment then it was an assault yeah uh oh yeah that was yes um but then throughout, like, my life after that, you know, in the workplace, there was several sexual harassment, stuff that I just had to put up with and deal with and couldn't really tell. It, my work situation was a little bit unique. So, dealt with that for years. And then, you know, I had an ex-husband who was some, like, I was <laughs> basically from 12 until... 25 I feel like I was um you were older than 25 I was 26 when I divorced mm -hmm. um I feel like men treated me like ass and titties and from young being a teen I felt like I always had to prove myself um that I was more than just this physical body and you know, this blonde hair and like cute little girl or whatever, I had to prove more like in, in my job, I had to climb the corporate ladder and you know, prove myself, prove I was educated, prove I was, you know, so you made something of myself. more than bait. Right, cause I feel like a juicy piece of meat, and this is just my opinion and how like life has transpired for me. And I tell my husband this too. Cause God bless my husband. My husband thinks I'm the sexiest, most beautiful thing. And you know, would love to be intimate with me all the time. And so even now as a 36 year old, I, like, you know, he'll walk in the door and be like, Oh, hibba, hibba, yaddy, you know, Oh baby. And I'm like, seriously, like, so I've constantly, every like man in my life, except for my dad, um, you know, I feel like I'm just a piece of meat and I've, it's always like a challenge to prove that I am more than a juicy steak for men to drool over. Like I've done therapy and life coaching and have found like this. So now at least I know this is my issue and I feel this way and have this opinion. And my husband will say like, but no, you know, you're not a piece. I, I love you and I think you're beautiful and I think you're sexy and this and that. And I'm sorry, I have, you know, high testosterone and this and that. And I'm like, and he justifies it, you know, like, I love you. And I'm not this way with other women. And I'm like, that's all fine and but I feel like, I still feel what I feel, you know? And so yes, when we got pregnant with our first baby and found out Peyton was a girl, I was just like, oh no, <laughs> I just wanted boys because I feel like it's less likely. You were scared. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's maybe mm -hmm. less likely for boys, but yeah, so 
And I mean, once again, not it even affects your marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, um, it On affects, a daily basis, it affects my marriage really? in different ways. Um, I am hyper vigilant and I startle really easily. And when I get scared, I get mad. Like I get immediately, like I get mad. Um, and so if I'm like in the bathroom and I'm like, I don't know, uh, brushing my teeth or something and Tyler comes in and he's not even trying to scare, he just walks into the bathroom and I jump like, like somebody like literally went boo. I jump like that and then I yell at him and it's not even, it's, it's instinctual. It's, it's not reaction. like, it's, it's an instinct. Um, and I know that and honestly for a long time, I didn't realize that like, a lot of the things that I do, I didn't realize that that was abnormal. I didn't have a clue because I'd been doing it since I was like 17, right? And so it wasn't even until a couple years ago that Tyler was like, don't you realize like all the ways like it affects you? Like you have all these weird things, like all these weird things and, and like it's kind of weird to live with you because, and I'm like, no, like I didn't even this have a clue. Abnormal? Yeah, I didn't know that that was abnormal. I didn't, I didn't even know hypervigilance was a thing. And I'm like that. I can't walk outside by myself. I won't take a walk by myself. Um, no, I mean, I, I would walk with you, but I would not go outside by myself during walk. the day and daylight. No, and no. Um, I'm always very aware of my surroundings, but like, I'm just saying, like even something that happened when you were 12 or seven, like it can even affect <coughs> your marriage and your relationship with other men in general yeah. You're, now. Yeah, mid thirties. and So it's so not something that like, it goes away. No, you just learn to cope. I mean, I don't want to say like I've dealt with it though, and I um, yes, yes, I'm just saying, but it still comes up mm -hmm, even if you don't mm -hmm. want it to. Especially when you know we're talking about mm -hmm. it, yeah. But like even with Billy, like even yeah. he's he's you know he's never done anything that you have felt like threatened by. No, but you I even, just feel even like him. You're just like Ugh. it's always first like yeah. Mm -hmm. It's always. Oh, those pants look good. Those, uh, you know, it's 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 complimentary, but like for me, it's, it's not. not. Mm -hmm. Like I've told him, I said, "Can't you tell me like you're such a great mom, or you're so smart, or thank you for helping me?" Like instant, like he loves to like compliment me, and I'm horrible. I thank you, Billy. I love you. He's um, not. Do he is not doing it to be anything but nice. No, yeah. but at the same time, it's I just instinctual for him to like want me i guess and i'm just like i'm not a piece of me damn it i'm i'm assuming it's probably really hard for men to understand this at all um because i don't think that they have to walk into the store and look around right. i don't think they have to worry about getting out to their car um in time yeah, i am I, the same way i'm so hyper vigilant mm -hmm. i i um and he like he doesn't want me to go to the store like late at night or whatever, but I'm like, we need this and that or whatever. Tyler, Tyler and so like I'll have my keys, you know, and my fingers to like mm -hmm. stab somebody and I'm well, just like, Nope, that's a sketch van. I ain't parking nope. there and And they even know. say that you shouldn't have your hair in a ponytail because it's easier to grab. So oh. I will I even take I'm not, I even take my hair down every time I go into a store. Yeah. And I don't even think about like in my head I'm not like take it down so nobody can grab it. It's just like ingrained in me. Mm -hmm. Um but that's what I'm saying. I'm just trying to reiterate that like it affects Affects you in so many ways that you don't even know it because it's yeah, just more normal. Than, more it's than normal. we realize, mm -hmm. even. And, oh, yeah. And through like communicating with Billy and some about this, like I've, I've realized, like, yeah, some I mean, of those it, things. It's sad, but it even affected your reaction to finding out you were another daughter. Mm -hmm. I cry. I mean, even now, like, no, she too. is so, like, I'm like, Rachel, there's a fine line between educating and scaring them because you were like, well, her daughter, Sophie, is 13 yes. now. And right, I was 12 when this yes. happened to me. Yes. And I told her, I'm like, have a conversation now. Like, if any, like, friends of dad say anything weird, I feel like I have a. Oh, and yeah. She's, she's like, she's like, you talk to her. And so Sophie. I told her, I said, go talk to her. Sophie, like, I knew that I was going to. I wanted to have a conversation with her, but didn't know what it was about. And so it was like the most awkward thing. Cause Sophie's like, I could go into her bedroom and uh, well, you know, it's not my daughter, but it's hers. But I, you know, I'm like, I'm awkward. I, and I'm, she doesn't know what I'm, she knows I want to talk to her, but not what it's about. And so I'm like, how do I even start this conversation with her? I'm just like, you know, when I was young, some things happened to me, you know, with my 
best friend's dad. And I said, just, you know, make sure if you don't feel comfortable, like at a friend's house or, you know, with their older brother or dad, like if they say anything that makes you feel like that's not right. You shouldn't be like but saying anything. Any a little like, feeling. Call your mom. Call your mom. I was like, you and your mom should have a code word. You know, you can call her and be like, hey, did you buy the peanut butter cups at the grocery store or whatever? Like, like, yeah. And say something like, just be weary of your surroundings because it's this the kind of thing happens. And, and she's like, okay. Remember, okay. she's like. I know, and I, it was like a, it was only like a five minute conversation. I came downstairs, you're like, you're already done? And I was like, yeah. Why did, I didn't, I, I mean, I, I didn't was, go into I detail was, with her, obviously, into like. I was more than happy to allow her to do that. And, um, I mean, it's, so, Sophie does have a stepdad, right? Um, although she calls my husband dad and her other dad, daddy. Um, but I know that when I was, got divorced, um, that was like, that was a concern of mine because honestly, like I remember growing up, there was, there was always well, like, probably you had my situation in the back of the head that, you know, well, your kids yes, would have and, a stepdad. But I mean, and... even growing up, my mom, if my mom heard that a friend had a stepdad, her guard, her like guard went up, Like a right? stepdad is, couldn't be worse than yes, a dad. Yes, yes, exactly. Really yes, yes. And I a don't pervert know, is a pervert. Yes. I don't know why, but that's, I mean, even that's how my mom, like that's honestly. And, um. So when I was in a position where, well, Sophie might have a stepdad, um, I was really, really cautious and careful. I mean, Tyler was the only man that my kids ever met. Um, but now even around other, like if, uh, if one of Sophie's friends is going to spend the night, I even feel like I have to be like overly transparent and overly like, like, come look, we're normal. He's just not like a stepdad. He's like a dad. Like, just because... I like I get. Oh, you mean it. if Sophie's friends are here? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. yes. Like that's I'm like. Come look in our closets. Like we have nothing to hide. There's no child porn in yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Like we're just. I, and that I when I told Rachel when I met Tyler, I was like, "You are too normal for me." Like, right? He's so no issues, no trauma. Billy too. He's, I know Billy's the same. Way. He's so normal. Why are you with me? Um, because I come with like. A, a literally a, a semi full of baggage two kids and some yeah, bags yeah so that's and i'm like like i remember thinking like this is never gonna work this is because he's so fucking normal yep and thank god it did but um yeah thank you yes uh do you have any other situation okay well i wanna i don't know if you want to share it i'm just gonna say go um, ahead so i remember this was like a year ago um a situation had happened that you were telling me about, um, and I was telling you a year, or that it happened a year. No, ago. you were telling okay. me about it a year ago. It happened many, many years ago. Okay, but I, I said, Rachel, that's. Oh, I said I, I don't even think you had acknowledged that. No, I hadn't. Uh, nobody but you knows that. I know. Well, so I'm not going to, I'm just saying sometimes mm, my husband does as if, cause after we had that conversation, I went home and was like, I, I was like this and he's like, what's wrong? He's like, I'm just, so I realizing some things think we downplay things. I mean, look at me and my, my basically friends. there was a drunk kind of college night and I was raped. It wasn't like I was, um, literally, she didn't even know that. Like literally she was telling me about this, telling me about this a year ago. And I'm like, Rachel, that's rape. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Um, I, but you know, I put myself in that situation. I, and technically like, remember that Minnesota law that like, if you have one drink of alcohol, like you can't press charges on a rape. Like if the woman chooses to have one glass of wine and then goes somewhere and gets raped, I think that's so wrong. They can't get charged with rape. They can get charged with a lesser, like, charge or something. I mean, I'm just like, if, we're, if we're putting pedophiles in prison for only three years, I'm, I'm not surprised. Um, uh, yeah. But I think, I think that, especially when we were, when we were raised, um, when I heard the word rape, I thought of something in an alley, in a dark alley. And a you're stranger, screaming, a stranger no! Attack. Ah, yes, no! Yes, like um, you, it was don't, very, you can't scream. So like there's, certain, yeah, just, like, you, and 
you might be too afraid to fight back. Like yeah, it, you just lay there like a mm -hmm. fish because you're yes, like because you don't know what else to do. Happening? Yes. Um. So I mean, that's what I'm saying is that when we like when we grew up, that that was our vision. Uh, our our vision of rape was you're walking in a dark alley and some stranger attacks you with a knife. And so so yeah. when these kinds of things happened to us uh, as teens or young adults or whatever, uh, we didn't immediately realize how big it was like how what it actually was mm -hmm. um because we weren't educated on that um like i know with my son now we have reiterated no means no and not just like not regarding like just sex but i mean everything like if somebody tells you to stop you fucking stop and i have ground that into him because i'm so like sensitive to that mm -hmm. um and i think that every mother of, of a son needs to take that really seriously and not just boys but girls too but teach them yeah. when somebody tells you to stop fucking stop um no matter yeah what it is mm -hmm. well yeah regardless of what it is if, if you're going if you're you know somebody stop stop um Anywho, so another 45 minute video so that's our um, sexual assault awareness month vlogs. Um, I'm sure a lot of you can relate and, you know, we probably have a few more stories. We didn't need to go into all these yeah. details um, of and stuff, but we've, yeah. Uh, we've had a, a thing is, I don't think we're that um, uncommon though. Um, no, I think lots of people have had it far, far worse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, um, I, and that's what I'm, I'm just, with you as far as the judgmental thing. Like, I think that's kind of what makes us both so understanding mm -hmm. of other people, I guess. And yeah, because yeah. you really have no idea what they've gone through in the past, like, you really or don't what know. they're going through that day, no. or like, even as I like face people, mm -hmm. you know, and just that strangers, like. If I'm in a bad mood, I try to not let mm -hmm. that rub I off too. on, like, strangers. I still try to, like, smile at people, because mm -hmm. you never know what shit they're going through. Mm -hmm. Because I, I think the, the thing about this kind of stuff is, like, it's not it's not an injury that you see. It's not, like, a, a, a scar or a black eye. Um, and that can kind of make it harder, because... You don't see it. You don't. You don't. You don't look at either one of us and think, "God, she went through hell," right? Um, so people, people, people need just need to be empathetic and not be so quick to judge and be patient and give others mercy and grace mm -hmm. because they don't know everything that's been that they've been through in their life in the past. And see something, say something, and talk to your kids. Mm -hmm. Talk to your kids. Educate your Boys kids. And girls. Teach your yeah. kids. Teach your kids to be good people. Honestly, I think if we just did that, we would have a whole lot less of this shit. If parents would just be parents. And, um, yeah, everybody, we should all be mad that pedophiles don't rot in prison. Mm -hmm. Chemically castrated. Yeah, why can't that just chair, be a thing? Like a, honestly, a, a repeat offender. Like, why mm -hmm. can't they just like? Well, they do have they do have the ability now to do that. Why don't um, they do it? Because more. they don't think it's ethical. But I'm like, but you think it's ethical for a, a 30 year old man to diddle a five year old? Like, I I'm sorry, but that that those children should be more important than that man's uh, ability to get a heart on. Sorry. That's so sad. So, okay. Anyways, subscribe, like, yeah, share, share, share. Yeah. Uh, Maybe if you think it'll help somebody. Yeah. Okay. We'll Bye. see you guys later.